celebrate active citizenship. And if anybody wants to tweet, the hashtag QE4SA, Quality Education for South Africa, and PFP are the two hashtags we'd like you to use, and we would like you to tweet, because there are a whole bunch of people around the country who are interested to know what's happening here tonight. This is, as I said, a celebration of active citizenship. We have, um, in this leadership circle, um, six partners and six principals who have been doing amazing work over the last year. And part of the design of this program is that they will come together and they will share something about what they've learned. So what I thought I should do is to just give you a little bit of a sense as to why, this, how this program came about and where we are right now so that we can have a bit of context. And then I'm going to hand over to Carissa, who is the lead of the facilitator for this particular leadership circle, and she can tell you a little bit more about the circle before we uh, hear from the partners and the principals themselves. So I think we're all absolutely in agreement that education has to be a national priority. I love the media because they're really helping us to make a case for change. This last Ferrara out of the 62 out of 62 um, for math and science, we have a baseline now. So we know where we need to go up is the only answer. Um, and I, when I, I talk to groups, I say to them, you know, what if we were to think about education in the same way that we did, uh, that we think about the uh, World Cup? And you remember the World Cup? We were very, we were all into it. We had wing, things on our wing mirrors, and we um, we went to the, we wore our yellow jerseys on Fridays, and we went to the fan club. Bought our two tickets, and we, you know, we were But with education, uh, many of us are sitting around the circle kind of saying, hmm, and you can get in my house some trouble over there. And that's not getting us anywhere. So even I love Jonathan Janssen dearly, and I love Mandela, and they're helping us realize how bad things are, but they're also standing on the sidelines and we're not moving forward. So the, the opportunity tonight is to find out about a way of actually being involved more so than we were with the World Cup. So the tongue-in-cheek comment here is that maybe education has to be even more important than hosting a World Cup. And the question is, what if we are being asked to be the change that we want to see in the world? What if the time for us to sit back and criticize and sit on the timeline is over? What if this is the moment for each of us to stand up and be counted? Because we have some context. I mean, first of all, we have to realize that this is our country and our children and our future. Uh, the defining moment for me was when, when I was having a conversation with Peter Block one evening and he kind of got really irritated with me when I, because I kept talking about my children and those children. And he kind of slammed the table and he said to me, Louise, aren't they all your children? So now I'm the mother of 14 million children and I'm walking around and I go, every principal, I say, how many of our children are in your school? And they say, no, no, not many. I said, no, I'm asking you a question again. How many of our children? And then they get it. And we've just heard of them. Lundy has 436 Lundy children of our children in her school. And uh, I tell you that she's not getting the support from us as a society right now. Maybe after tonight that might change. Now we do have some context, further context. First of all was the, the call to action in the dinner Kent scenario. And I don't know when you were the morning of the 5th of May 2009 when the dinner Kent scenario was published, but it wasn't a massive moment for me real realization that if we are going to allow, walk apart or walk behind the two, two of the scenarios to play out, our country will burn by 2020. And if we look at what's happening today in Marikana and all of the things that we see, we are, we are currently living in the walk apart scenario. And it's, there's no, nothing positive can come out of that which is where everyone continues to do their own thing. We are also seeing glimpses of war together, and that's what we're going to be talking to you tonight, as an example of a war together project. Because we've all been called to lead South Africa. We've all been, you know, stand up and lead. And then, as I think Richard was saying to me outside, what do I do? Okay, I want to lead, but what do I do? So that's the other thing we're going to do tonight, is we're going to make it really easy for you to know what you can do wanted to be involved, apart from the fact that we're celebrating citizenship in the front row here. The National Indy City National Development Plan, and if you're not, if you haven't looked at it, we really want to encourage you to look at it. It talks about three key enablers.
regulars for this plan. It has a beautiful vision for 2030 for our country. But there are three key enablers, active citizenship, leadership, and capable state. What we are doing in the partnership for possibility process is to develop all three of those. Um, so that's another reason. So I often get asked, who gave you the mandate to do this work in education? And I have to say no one. I'm just an active citizen who cares. And last time, last time when we were together in a room like this, Mapela Rapela was there and she called us all to be members of the Citizens Movement for Social Change. So I've now given you all the reasons why we feel we have the rights and the mandate and the responsibility to do something about education rather than continue to sit back and wait. Now, in the World Economic Forum Global Competitiveness Report, I don't know whether any of you have seen the, the 2013 version, we are now no longer number 130 something, we are now 140 out of 144 for the quality of our education system. But in that same report, we are number one in the world out of 144 countries for the strength of auditing and reporting standards. And number two in the world for the availability of financial services. So what you will see tonight is this idea of what if we were able to tap into knowledge and skills that sit into that world that's created this, you know, number one and number two in the world, rather than continue to be hampered by the fact that these not, the, the, the skills and knowledge doesn't sit in education. So we brought into this leadership circle that you're going to find out tonight, people like Pashendra and David, who are um, well, respected business leaders, who had the opportunity to work with these principles in a co-action and co-learning partnership. Uh, Where's Andre Pretorius was in that very first meeting. Where's Andre? I have I tell the story all the time now, Andre. Andre, Andre and Eric Buff, and I think Sandra was in that, well you were in that first meeting as well. We were the first meeting in 2008 when we were kind of figuring out whether this project had validity. And I met with the principals and they said three things to us, which was just set the scene for the whole thing. And I don't know whether you guys remember this, but this is what I took away from that meeting. They said, firstly, we, the principals, do not want to be fixed by anybody. Because they said it's demeaning. You know, don't adopt us. You can adopt puppies and babies, but don't adopt us, principals. We, we don't want to be adopted and we don't want to be fixed. Secondly, and we don't want to become the dumping ground of your second-hand paintings or your old stationery or that stuff that you don't want to have anymore. Because that's the meaning too. And thirdly, we would, we would be interested in being part of this process. If, if these business leaders who you want to know part of, because I told them about this idea of partnering business leaders with school principals, I said, if you, if the business leaders would be, would be willing to consider the possibility, they would learn something from us as well. Now, David and Nishendra and trying to see, Ivana, are going to tell you something about what they learned from the business, from the principals. And we keep having a bit of an argument around who's learning the most. Is the principals learning most from the business leaders or is it the other way around? Um, because we had a dream, and our dream is quality education for all children in South Africa by 2022. Now, whenever I have this slide, people say impossible. And Idi Amin said, when someone said it's impossible, when someone says it's impossible, it's not a declaration, it's a dare. So I'm daring you all tonight. What if, what if we decide that we can have quality education for all children in South Africa? And then each of us convince 10 other people, and each of those 10 people convince 10 other people. What, you know, imagine if we as a nation stop bickering about Nkandla and all the other things that we bicker about and actually just get on with the job and change this education system together. So that's our dream and we can't do it on, on our own. So we're not here to just tell us about what we're doing. We're here to invite you into a conversation tonight. So the question that we were, we were asking ourselves is what if business leaders could learn about leadership and that's what you're going to hear about tonight in the schools. So, so I'll tell you a story. Um, the head of leadership development from Hollard is a partner for possibility. And she's decided that she is now advising to all her business leaders that they should rather, in my mind, they should rather do this program next year than go to Gibbs. And Nick McDowell is not it is mindless because he agrees that we need to sort out education. Because she says to me, Louise, my business leaders are way too important to have them sit in a business school for 10 days a year and need them in the schools. Can you imagine what they can do in schools? So we currently have 84 of these partnerships around the country. Can I just see anyone in the room who's a partner for possibility right now? Come on, we've got lots. Isn't that amazing? And, and what's so amazing about this program is how it is just attracting the best.
best. So you have to be very special to be a part of the possibility. So, you know, if you're sitting here thinking you want to consider it, only if you're really, really special. You are. That's why you're here tonight. So you're fine. You're in. You've been selected. So I want to quickly tell you how it works, so because you're going to be hearing from them about what they've taken away. And so I need to tell you how the program hangs together. So it's a year-long program. This group started about a year ago. Um, it has six components in it, and what we've done is we've said, what are the you know, world-class leadership development programs? What do those look like? So if we're going to compete with GIPS, we need to know that we... And, and we're not only competing with GIPS now, we're now competing with Harvard and with NCIAD and with lots of other places. So David could have gone to Harvard if he wanted to, but he decided to do this program. I'm assuming, David, with your kind of organization. Um, so we wanted, we needed to make sure that this is world class. Not for two reasons, because we wanted it to be world class for David, but we even more importantly wanted it to be world class for Lundy. Because the reality is that we have principals in our country, we've got about 25,000 schools, of those 25,000 schools, 20,000 are now uh, labeled or judged to be failing. Now we've got some Americans in the room, so I have to qualify this. If we in America say schools are failing, we say schools are failing because they're not creating 21st century citizens, or they're not creating kids with 21st century skills. In South Africa, when we say the schools are failing, is because the children cannot read and write at grade level. Only 80% of our grade fives, 11 year olds, can read at grade level in South Africa. Sorry, what did I say? 20% uh, of the grade eights, of the grade fives, can read at grade level today. It's a very, very, very large percentage of our children who are not prepared for the future and they are leaving our schools without the necessary qualifications to live a sustainable life. So we need world class preparation for our principals. So the reality is, and I don't know the background, there's just six principals that you can meet tonight, but what I find when I talk to principals is most of the principals in South Africa were promoted from, uh, they were a teacher, then they became a head of department, then they became a deputy principal and a principal with no leadership preparation on that journey. And no preparation for managing and leading a huge organization like this. I'm seeing young people probably said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And where they have had preparation, it wasn't world class. And so what we've decided to do is to create a world class leadership development program for the business, for the principal. So we, and, we, and we know that we um, leadership development programs have a number of components. One is the idea of being part of a community of practice. So the business leaders will tell you, or the principals will tell you that they're not sure whether they learn more, that they learn more from each other because they were in the community of, of practice, or that they learn more from the business leader, or that the business leaders, because it's continuous communal learning, um, social learning. Secondly, we, know, we knew there needed to be some content, so we went around and said, what are the and if we had to choose five books, what were the five books that had the most impact on all of our lives? So that becomes part of the curriculum. Uh, there's some training, so they attend five days of training. There's some, and then the most important thing is that we ask each of these business leaders to work with the principal in the school to deal with some, some <coughs> challenges. And you're going to find out about one particular piece of work that they did all together. Carissa's going to tell you about that. There's some coaching, there's some reflection, and then we have tonight where they're doing feedback about what they've done. So, in total, we ask business leaders and principals to make a commitment to 106 hours during that year. And you will see on there the books and the, co and the courses that they do and everything else. So it's a, it's a big commitment, a big commitment over a year. And tonight, the opportunity for them is to say, what's for the future? Are they walking away from each other or are they going to continue to stay in partnership? Um, I asked Pete Labour the other night, some of you may know Pete Labour is a big hotshot in Liberty and Hollard and he's a partner. I said, Pete, what's up with you and Joe when you leave, when, when we get to the end of the, of the process? Oh, he said, I'm not going anywhere because when Joe is the Minister of Education, I want to be there next to you. <laughs> so, um, that equates to 67,000 learners whose lives are being touched through this process at the moment. Currently in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, Stellenbosch, Soon, Bloomful Town, George Nice, and some of the West, Hermanus, East London, and you would ask, how on earth are you going to Hermanus? Because there's a group of leaders there who just decided to stuff it. We're going to do something like this. 
So that's how we work now. So we go where the energy is and then people invite us to go work. Many of the large organizations are involved. You may not be able to see the ones you know, but I can just I've just noticed some pick and pay people here are very excited. We've got one pick and pay leader that's hopefully just the beginning. We want more pick and pay people involved. Um, and our dream is, or our vision is, that in five years from now, we will be in 2,000 schools, that's 10% of our schools, and that there will be such a systemic impact as a result of that 10% that we will definitely be able to reach our, our, our vision of 20, uh, quality education for all children by 2022. So I'm going to hand over to um, Carissa. I thought this might be a good opportunity for you to just tell you that we have a new website, and the webs on that website you can see the, the various leadership circles, and this is Cape Town Leadership Circle 2. We have to find a way of keeping track of this. The accountants are very irritated with us for not being clear about who we are talking about, but they called themselves the Scenic South Leaders Leadership Circle. So, um, Carissa, I want you to come and tell us a little bit about the group. 